Hello and welcome to this episode of Farming Matters. I am your host, Erin Schneider. I'm a farmer and I work with the North Central Region SARE program. And I am excited to be here with you all today. Um, and I'm joined by Marie Flanagan. Hello. She's our Farming Matters producer. And you viewers, you are in for a treat. We are here with a farmer rancher grant recipient, um, Christine Williams. She is with the Pepperberries Urban Farm and Agape Grow Education Center in, um, outside of Kansas City, um, Missouri. And Christine, I am delighted and I hope I have a feeling our viewers will be as well to learn about ground cherries. Right. Thank you, Erin. Um, so I am exci excited to be able to share this with everybody. I love ground cherries. In fact, we just did a ground cherry tour this morning. Now our beds are not ready yet. We're got to clean the hill, but we, everybody that comes to our farm, we share the ground cherry system, the hillside system, and um, I just tell everybody about it because it is a superfood. It is such a good crop. It's so high in, in nutritional value, and it's a long lasting. I don't understand why, except for harvest. It's really hard to harvest, I think that why we don't see them in the stores and the farmer's markets because they last forever. I mean, you can harvest them and they'll be good a month, month and a half later in the fridge still. They taste like a smoothie in your mouth. So, I mean, they've got mango and pineapple and a little bit of, of um, sometimes I get a coconut flavor, but not very often, but the mango and pineapple and a little touch of tomato every once in a while. So they are in the nightshade family and um, very much related to uh, tomatilla. It has the husk around it like a tomatilla does. When they fall to the ground, that's when you harvest them. And, um, and when you first harvest them from the ground, they're green or starting to turn orange, but you want them to turn a, a bright orange or a, a yellowish orange color before you eat them. So it takes a couple days after you've harvested because they're in the nightshade family, they're very frost sensitive. And so that's why we don't put them out until Memorial weekend. Um, even though our time here, we're in zone 6A, really September and October um, is the high point for around here when we harvest them. But we will start getting some in July and August and sometimes if we don't have a frost until November, they'll keep going. Um, we started doing this about four years ago and we had an area that um, we had to mow and it was a pretty steep hill. And we thought, well, what could we grow on this that we could get more production for our farm and um, turn it into an added value product or fresh crops? And we had already been growing the ground cherries on the ground, like the traditional way. And, um, and it was good, but as a farmer, it was the last thing that I would ever get harvested because by the time I got all the other production done to get down on the ground and harvest them, I just couldn't do it. My back would not do it. And so this hillside system was just a perfect thing for us to try and figure out if it would we'd be able to get more production, to be able to get ground cherries to our farmer's market and out into the public. So this is a few pictures of the ground cherry hill. Um, you can see my grandson there at that time was seven and he can handle those panels with no problem. So we made them um, three feet wide by four feet long or something like, I think it was three, three feet by four feet and um, so they're not heavy at all. They, we had very little wind pickup and we get a lot of wind here on our farm. And so they are really tucked in there pretty good. Um, and, but just easy to pick up. Um, control of weeds was wonderful. The third picture here on the, the side of the ground cherries. And that one is, uh, it's either the first or second year when we decided we needed to raise them up higher. We don't have 
the raised bed in between and that's where we changed it and put it much higher so that they were um, not touching the panels because here they're touching the panels and they just weren't rolling down. And so you can see on the other picture, we've got um, one of the gutters in, one getting ready to go in and, um, and everything is very movable. And so it worked very well. Um, we could pick them up and, and this is pretty well what we've done every year is pick them up at this time of year, um, get our beds rebuilt kind of, and put all of our nutrition back into the hills, the areas that we're planting in, and then put it back down and weed control. The only weeds we'd have would be between the panels there. The rest stayed nice and, and clear of weeds. So we didn't have that major problem. Um, and so we started doing it four years, five years ago. This would be the fifth um, summer of, of doing the hillside system. We first started out with um, making panels and running the panels up and down. And we used the, um, the vinyl house siding and to use the panels so that we'd have these long panels to be able to let the cherries hit the panel and run down into a gutter system. And um, we made the panels small enough that a woman could handle it. I didn't want great big six foot long ones or anything like that. I wanted to be able to do set this system up myself. Every year we've changed our system quite a bit. Um, this year we're gonna be changing it again and I'll tell you about the changings we'll do this year. But we did two types of systems, one with the panel and then one with black canvas. And just to see how it worked all on the hillside and so with the whole idea that the cherries hit the ground and roll down the um, either the vinyl sidings or the canvas and into a gutter system. And then we could take a little broom and sweep them all up into the edge and harvest in one bunch. Um, the first year, it we did not take into account that it was the, the plant grew so short to the ground and um, so we still had to harvest up the hill and move the, the branches and so it'll roll down. Um, so then we, we uh, then the next year mounded it up um, where we planted the, the transplants and so that it would not do that. It still went down a little bit more than I liked. I wanted it to be really a good space in between the branches and the vinyl um, siding and so this year is where we're changing that part. We are gonna put some cattle guard under it so that it puts it up above it. It's also, we're gonna be adding a, a spring release to it so that we can hit the spring like a bed spring or something like that and shake the cattle panel and it will shake all of the ripe ones off. And they're not totally ripe. They, when they hit the ground, it still takes another couple of days for they're totally ripe. But so, but it would take all the loose ones off and then roll down and we can go on and harvest it from the gutter system. Uh, just the, the only thing that I would probably change is using the vinyl siding. I would probably go with one of the metal side, sidings instead because they were, so we had some breakage from cold weather. Mm -hmm. And um, even though we left them out all year long in the sun, and so the sun would bake them, the, the snow would, would be on them. Um, but, and we had a few just get damaged from that. If I was to remake them now, I would probably cut them to a two by four instead of uh, in the size of the panel itself, because we really don't need that whole three foot across the beds. And then we could get more plants in harvesting, they do fall to the ground. Um, that's when you pick them up. And that's why we wanted the hillside system so they, they could roll down. It'd be easier for us to pick them up. Um, this is a picture here of my husband cleaning them and cleaning them just means taking off the husk. They store really, really well in the freezer. So we put all of ours up in the freezer till we have time to go on and, and make them up into jams and jellies or the salsas. So there's ground cherry jam recipe of the coffee cake. One of my very favorite ones is, is doing, it's basically a yellow cake. 
that you're putting some ground cherries in there. So that's a really good one. Um, the salsa, love that one, and which is re really easy to make. But what drew you to ground cherries at first? Like, do you remember the first taste of ground cherries you had, Christine? And that yeah. Um, well, I'm a chef also, okay? Mm -hmm. So that was kind of probably my first curiosity when I discovered them through Breaker Creek seeds. Mm -hmm. And um, I was like, oh, I'd like to try these. And I planted them in the wrong place because it wasn't, I did not know that they would come back there every year or I would have put them somewhere else. Um, and so it was just, I mean, it would have been nine years ago when I first discovered them. And when you take them to market, you peel them before you take them to market? No, we do not. We leave those husks on and we tell them because it's gonna, they're gonna last longer if they are not peeled back. We don't just sell fresh produce at our market. We sell jams and jellies, we sell ferments. And, but we will give anybody the recipe of anything that we make. And they're like, whoa, 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 you're giving, yeah, because I would rather them eat healthy. In your project report, I remember you highlighting how you bringing people together through your um, Ground Cherry Festival. Our Ground Cherry Festival, I love, because um, they can come out, they can see the system. They taste the different stuff. Um, we, you know, they're just, we're trying to make it a community. We are located in one of the worst communities in worst, the worst in crime and drugs and stuff in Kansas city. Mm -hmm. And we are trying to change this area from the inside out by teaching people how to garden at the ground cherry festival. We don't just have people from our community come in. So we really don't have that many from our community yet but we have the surrounding communities coming out to it. The other urban farmers, some of the farmers that are not urban are coming to it because they're trying to learn too. And so we're just trying to, you know, create this community and people and acknowledge that there are farmers here in Kansas city, right in the city. And that if everybody does a little bit, then we can provide food that we all need here. What would you offer, um to other farmers who are maybe wanting to try ground cherries. I mean, you've, you've made you've made it so generous with your information shared and like recipes and how to grow, but it also sounds like you have like a growing network. If you're a farmer just maybe starting and you know, maybe they don't have that network, but what were some advice you'd offer to them to get started there? I just say, try it, put, put them in. They are so easy to grow and you know, I have not found very many people that don't like them, but even if you put them in, put them in, in a place that if you don't do the system, put them in part of your garden that you're going to know this is ground cherry area and they come back and then share them with everybody. Even if you don't like them, let other people try them because <laughs> they are a superfood. I would probably get on Facebook and search for some farming um, groups that are in your area. And then just, you know, if they're trying to find some ground cherry seeds, there's going to probably be somebody that is willing to give a few seeds and try it that way. Mm -hmm. And even though they're in the nightshade family, we don't have a lot of problems growing them. I've never seen any disease on them. We have ants, ants like them, mm -hmm. but it's because it's that sweet, sticky syrup that it puts out sometimes. Um, but other bug control, we just have never had to really any problems with it. Christine, thanks for being really generous with your time and your knowledge uh -huh. and your recipes and your materials on our project report website, but then also just in your community, more importantly, and just growing, growing food and, and building the, building the ground cherry love from the soil. Yeah. Oh, I love it. <laughs> yeah. You. I appreciate you guys thinking about us for it. Oh yeah. yeah. And you guys get to Kansas City, you call me so you can <laughs> come see us.